Airstream Journey, Episode 2. In October, a friend and I were invited on a duck hunt up on Saginaw Bay, Michigan. He was raised in Michigan and we both love the state. Northern Michigan is a beautiful place and I don't think a lot of people know just how beautiful it really is. We went last year too, but we stayed in one of those motels that has like 12 rooms that were popular back in the early days of cross-country travel. They were always off major state roads long before the big hotel and motel chains ever existed. Before the huge highway system was put in place, weary travelers would just run into these places. I'm sure thousands of them went out of business at the same rate that travel went from the famous Route 66 to all the major interstates. They were easy to put up and easy to manage. All you really needed was to have some road frontage, some cinder block walls, and a simple call to the Sears to have 12 queen size beds and accessory stuff delivered. Some of these places still exist, and the one we stayed at last year <laughs> certainly does. It wasn't a bad place per se, it's just I don't think it had an upgrade since Nixon was wondering if he was going to get away with it. When I got invited this year, I knew I would take the Airstream. We have yet to name it, but I'm sure without question we will. We had only owned it a few weeks, and my wife was already expressing concern about the condition it would be in when we got back. Somehow, our Airstream to both of us has become like our dog Augie. We think of it all the time and want to be with it all the time. We had just returned from a 900 mile trip to pick it up and just a few weeks later I was headed right back out again and I couldn't wait to be back on the road again. If something happens in the Airstream, I seem to lose all sense of time and all memory of the day-to-day -day grind that life brings. My life has been grinding for longer than I can remember and lately I'm just tired all the time. On our first trip it was like Neo in the movie The Matrix when he chooses the pill that reveals the true nature of life his life. Buying the Airstream just opened up a world we were missing and once you see the reality of that reality, it is the only reality worth having. I picked up my friend Bill at his apartment. It's in a 20-story building and his wife was waving goodbye from the 18th floor enthusiastically. I couldn't wait to get on the highway. My truck, Tubby, doesn't really like inner city driving and when my overall length is near 50 feet long, I don't like it either. It was going to be a long day, but my friend Bill always keeps the conversation going. He is without question the happiest person I have ever met. Except for when he was hurting emotionally one time, and only for a few seconds have I ever not seen him far from a smile. He grew up around Lansing, and I lived west of Detroit for nine years. We both have automotive backgrounds, so he knows the business like I do. His with GM, and mine was with Ford. He and I were invited by some guys we met through work, and as a group, we love being together. I don't know much about them, but when it comes to being a man, men don't need to. Men either click or they don't. But I've not met too many that couldn't find some common ground one way or another. My buddy loved our Airstream, and I was excited to share it with him. I knew with certainty the Airstream had no bed bugs, and I could not speak with confidence that the seven-year-old motel didn't have a few that called the place home for quite some time. We stayed right at the edge of the beach where Lake Huron meets Saginaw Bay. I love Lake Huron because I have some very special memories there. Huron is a kind of a secret because most of its shoreline borders nothing but Michigan farm country and it just isn't a magnet for humans like Michigan and Lake Erie are. Huron's real value is it's the north-south route that allows the huge lake freighters to head up for iron ore or bring it back and it's been this way since steam engines were invented for ships. It's always cold and beautiful blue in color. It's often a rich royal blue and although I may have seen it on other lakes I don't remember the blue being so amazing. If you are looking for peace on the American side or the Canadian side, Huron is certainly a great choice. Sugar beet harvest was taking place and it was a sight to see. Where we were staying was in the heart of sugar beet country and hundreds of windmills. When you get up to the northern area, it's a sea of farms and windmills. Michigan allows extremely heavy trucks, and there is a sugar beet processing plant in a town called Seaboy. It was truck after truck after truck of farm trucks headed for that pioneer processing plant. All I saw was dollar signs, and I'm sure the farmers felt the same way. It's a 24-hour operation, and that 
is simply non-stop big trucks, big piles of beets, and big money, all happening in a few brief weeks. We headed for the campground before we were going to meet the guys for dinner because we wanted to get set up. I didn't know this, but when you have an Airstream, people notice it, and people will want to talk about it. When we bought it, we knew that people liked them because no one had hardly any inventory. But I don't think Donna and I realized that there is a true and very deep passion around them. That passion even extends to people who don't own one. I think because they have always looked the same, the affection lasts over generations and always has. People say things like, my grandpa had one, I grew up with one, and my neighbor down the street has one. Most just want to peek inside to see what it really looks like after a life of possibly not knowing. And I, of course, love to share it. It's not new, but it's in extremely fine condition. I like to think the people I bought it from know that like 72% or so of all produced since 1932 are still on the road. Theirs will be too. I love wristwatches as well. And there is a company called Patek Philippe and their advertising used to say something to the effect that you never really own a Patek Philippe. You simply are entrusted with it until you give it to the next generation. I think that is the way Airstreams are. I know I personally feel that way now. It rained a lot on that trip. We shot some ducks, smoked cigars, and my friend Bill got to share the joy with me of hearing the rain hit an Airstream roof while falling asleep. We drove about 843 miles, burned a lot of diesel, loved each other's company, but I would have done it all just to hear that wonderful sound of the rain. Every trip with that Airstream is creating memories for my wife and I, and has opened an amazing door that we didn't even know needed opening. I'm so glad we stepped through it when the moment came that we never saw coming.